Sit back and buckle up for Godzilla X Kong The New Empire, Underground Layers, Tripwires, Indiana Jones Contraptions, Ice Beams, Lava Waterfalls, Laser Breath, Gravity Fights, Mechanically Enhanced Apes, Wonky Little Smeagol Ass Mofos, Frosted Tips Godzilla, Maniac Veterinarians, Fucking over the Italian and Egyptian tourism industry? Giant monsters punching other giant monsters or using smaller giant monsters as clubs? This movie is basically just a list of what 12-year-old me thought would be cool as hell. And guess what? 12-year-old me was right. So, I have to say... I went into this kind of like with, with kind of middling expectations. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't like super impressed with like the previous um, entries in this, I think, legendary Godzilla, whatever this American version of it is. Mm -hmm. But seeing this movie, I think they finally clicked into place of what they wanted to do. Cinema is saved. Yes. And and here's the thing, because like I've I've been seeing this, this has been getting kind of like middling reviews. People are like, I am going to say like this movie is not just you know, like ironically the greatest movie ever made, but legitimately I think it's actually a good movie. No, it's legitimately <laughs> the greatest movie ever made. No, I actually had a really good time with it, and not just because oh I turned my brain off everything. There's parts of this movie where I look and I say. They really gave a damn about this and that aspect of it, and I really want to talk about that tonight. Yeah, no, I I really enjoyed with giant air quotes ar um, around them the prior one, Godzilla vs. King Kong. I remember because that was one of those like pandemic like simultaneous release ones, and I had an incredible. A teleparty with that which i don't remember much of which probably says all that needs to be said <laughs> about that but like we were obviously just riffing on it the whole time but i went back and rewatched it because i couldn't remember what the hell happened i still can't quite remember what happened a couple days ago um but like definitely like throughout it i was like wow they're really like giving a lot to these two central characters and i think he's able to kind of i had one guy's able to like further kind of finesse that element that makes these movies kind of fun and interesting and different to a lot of other kind of, of these big sort of shocky blockbusters yeah i think that his skill has really come through and being able to make it's basically a giant cartoon <laughs> <laughs> yeah um in a way where it's like you know the character because at this point like there's not really a whole lot of pretense for, like the human drama in this um, the human characters are basically cartoons in themselves, mm -hmm. but that makes them, I, that kind of makes them fit in better with this world. Cause like, if you're going to focus on giant monsters, as like your main cast, mm -hmm. um, you know, your humans have to kind of be like, okay, we're at a giant monster movie. Let's kind of play along with that. Right. Like this movie, a spends a lot of time sort of trying to figure out and succeeding how do i like give a sort of like interiority and personality to these like kaiju creatures and then also how do we kind of rather than trying to bulk out the story by creating all this extra side drama sort of like more streamlining the like jay and or whatever the character i don't even remember any of the characters names um just streamlining them into the service of this rather than trying to like put on it's like a weird little like sidecar on the motorcycle or something yeah you know because you have like i think for me like kind of like the nadir of this was like remember like godzilla king of the monsters that was like 2018 i mm -hmm. think 2019 and like when i was like you know i was like you're trying to do like all like this thematic stuff it's trying to be like serious mm -hmm. in a lot of ways and it's just like that really don't, i don't remember i just remember like the mother was like oh I want to intentionally cause an apocalypse. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And, oh my God. Was like, and it was like this like really grim. And it's like, no, no, it's, it, it, it's what's kind of sad. And I'm sad saying this because 
again, I really respect Gareth Edwards for like his skills, like a visual as a visual director and everything. Mm -hmm. I think he's legitimately talented. But 2014 Godzilla for trying to be like this like gritty, realistic, modern interpretation of what a Godzilla event would look like mm -hmm. didn't quite hit all the beats. And now that Godzilla minus one came out and basically did everything 2014 was trying to do, but better. Right. And now the franchise has gone this complete other direction. It's like Godzilla 2014 kind of doesn't really have much of a place anymore. <laughs> it's kind of like left out in the cold. Yeah. It's like, cause like if you want like, you know, um, you know, Godzilla as like this potent symbol of like human, like, you know, humanity struggles against this or that different things. You have that, you have, um, Shin Godzilla, mm -hmm. you know, the, I mean, the original from 1954. Whereas if you want like the, you know, the, the goofier version of Godzilla where he's punching monsters and he's like doing crazy, <laughs> like WWE style moves. Yeah. Um, this is a really great uh, addition to that. No, I think like these things can co-occur. They frankly have always like the, this is basically, yeah. uh, you know, a, a late show era film and just like destroy all monsters or something. And it's the about the only thing they haven't done yet with this whole monster versus introduce like aliens which i guess they've decided they still need to w walk us into a little bit more or something i don't know but we need monsters versus aliens in here this is like <laughs> the live action adaptation <laughs> one of the terms I, and i kind of talked about this before on um on my main channel is that when it comes to, like, the idea of, like, a dumb, fun kind of movie, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, like, that term always feels a little uncomfortable to me because I feel like the kind of movie that's, like, genuinely really fun, where it's not super deep, but it's really enjoyable, that still takes a lot of skill to do. That still takes a lot of, you know, technical know-how, like, being able to create characters mm -hmm. that we want to watch, that we want to keep going with. And, you know, that's something that takes a lot of thought to go into as much as like, ver as any other kind of a story. Mm -hmm. And what I think what this movie does well, uh, last week we were talking about, you know, Frozen Empire, which was just kind of very dull for both of us. Right. And this time around... I was having a blast in the theater with this one. <laughs> and I think it's a very potent sign of what you can do when you're just like, okay, we're going to have this be a silly, silly kind of movie, but we're still going to make it the best it can be. And I think it deserves credit for that. Yeah, it's a very simple movie. Like, I don't know if I'd go so far as to call it, like, elegant or something in its simplicity, but, like, that's <laughs> that's way too far. But, like, it's very, I think there's, like, it takes, I guess, like, a sort of confidence to, like, just have this fairly linear kind of, like, A to B to C, like, thing, like, as compared to First Empire, where there's this kind of, like, like, oh, God, we just have to keep putting more things in to make it appealing, and there's this sort of delusional effect there, um, whereas with... Godzilla, you essentially have like kind of um, what you have Godzilla doing whatever the hell he's doing and trying to figure out what's going on, trying to figure out the source of these signals, and then kind of like Kong's sort of Kong and Gia are on these like kind of parallel tracks, and that's kind of what forms our emotional core of the film, and then we can just put a whole bunch of crazy action onto it. Yeah, because like you know, right from the get go, it's because the movie starts with, by the way, we're going to go into like spoilers or anything. It's it's Godzilla versus Kong. There's not really much to spoil. <laughs> um, but disclaimer there for anybody. Like at the beginning of the movie, Kong is, you know, he's inside Hollow Earth. Um, and he's, he's lonely, you know? It's like, and one of the things that is really great this movie that I really want to emphasize is the visual storytelling they do with these characters that are 
largely mute characters. They don't speak mm -hmm. throughout the whole movie. And a lot of them don't even get any subtitles. And yet, we're still able to kind of follow what's going on. And that right there alone is something that takes great skill to do. Like, I, I really believe that if you take, like, the CGI segments of this movie where Kong is, like, talking to, you know, other Kongs, like, other apes, things like right. that. And if you... If, if Pixar uploaded those clips and be like, oh, this is our next project, people will be calling it a masterpiece. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's... <laughs> just because it's not a, you know, categorized as a, quote-unquote, like, an animated film, that doesn't mean the animators weren't busting their butts making this work. And I really appreciate the work they put in here. Yeah, I think that, like, it's really interesting to see how they interact or how they kind of express, like, at the beginning you can tell that he's feeling lonely and down and, you know, stuff. It, it's not like they, like, they find this interesting balance where it's not just, like, straight up just anthropomorphizing, like, Godzilla or whatnot, but it, like, kind of finds a way to analogize, like, human-like emotions, but it, it, with, a, like, a different vocabulary that, like, these that these other creatures might have, just kind of physically. So it's very interesting. You still get exactly what they're going for, but it's not sort of, like, you know, um, like a one-to-one -one kind of translation, I guess. Right, you know, because it's, like, because with, like, with Kong, he's a little bit more human-like. Sure. It's, like, he almost has, like, kind of, like, that everyman kind of feeling. It's, like, hey... I'm Bob, you see me down at the bar, you know, we talk, we have a good time, and I moonlight at saving the world, I guess, with my yeah. trusty axe. <laughs> He's like a suburban Whereas... dad after 4 p.m. on a Sunday. <laughs> exactly. Um, and meanwhile, like, Godzilla is still, like, more primal, more bestial. It's like... Mm -hmm. And they really communicate that super well. Um, mm -hmm. I love Godzilla's the part, still like... kind of sassy. <laughs> Yeah, I love the part where, like, at the end where, like, Godzilla's, like, you know, Kong is like, dude, get your ass over on this side of the continent. <laughs> and Godzilla charges him, and Kong's like, okay, dude, listen, listen, I have something to say, listen to me! <laughs> and then Godzilla just pounces him. It's crazy um, stuff. And so it's like, and it's not just like the big, because there are lots of like big, crazy set pieces. And that's kind of what this movie's made of. It's like the story's just, okay, how can we get from this interesting set piece to that interesting set mm -hmm. piece? And it's like, oh, they, the crystals, if you touch them together, will reverse gravity. And it's like, sure. Sure. Great. <laughs> Don't even explain it. Um, and, and yeah, like, you know, they, cause like in some aspects, you know, the, it's just like, okay, we don't have to care about certain things like, oh, making sure all these things, it's just like, okay, we're more focused on what crazy cool thing can we happen, can happen next. Let's make sure it is an actual interesting thing. Let's make it happen. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. um, I'll tell you what, one of the things like I was really pleasantly surprised by, so mm -hmm. In the marketing, I saw Baby Kong. Baby Kong. It's inevitable. I saw Baby Kong, yes. And I was like, great. This We had Baby Yoda. We had like all this like babies that we're going to get Baby Kong. And I'm going to, I'm probably going to think this thing is annoying. They're going to, everyone's going to fawn over it. I'm just going to roll my eyes, whatever. And then <laughs> in the scene where you're, the Kong meets Baby Kong, <laughs> he picks this little guy up. <laughs> It just starts seizing to bash the other. And right from the, I was like, okay, I think I love this movie now. <laughs> there were several moments when I had to remember that I couldn't just like throw my fists in the air because I have an ounce of dignity. And that was one of them. I'm like, just, yeah, smack him around. <laughs> well, I, I lost my shit in the theater at that. I was just like, But the, and the thing that gets because like you have like the big the 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 moments that are already becoming memes online like these big <laughs> things right. But then also Mini Kong has like a an actual character arc through the movie. Yeah, it's 
it's wild that like in this film not to constantly be comparing to recent memory but like in this film we get like like two, two or three like complete character arcs most largely told through like non-verbal storytelling whereas what we had to talk about last week was like so much talking and exposition and stuff in service of so little right you know or it's like as last week we were talking about like like i was i was desperately trying to sift through and be like here's like a few little gold flakes here and there like there's i promise there's some good stuff in this movie that justifies me giving it a four out of ten and not lower <laughs> whereas with this one is like there's so many things i can point to not just again not just the big spectacle but just these little character moments so like this is like a sweet thing that's a cute like in the middle of this big fight, because like Kong, he goes back to Middle Earth. Or like he gets the humans, go to Middle Earth, not not Middle Earth. <laughs> the, the, uh... <laughs> it's better that way. <laughs> yeah, I know people were were concerned about the way that the franchise was going after Rings of Power, but God, <laughs> I mean, it took a real turn. But um, so like, and when he's when Kong is fighting all these guys, like, you know, you can see that he still is trying to be, like, a good guy. Like, this one guy, like, goes over the cliff. Kong, like, grabs him, tries to save him. But that guy, like, still tries to, like, backstab him again. Mm-hmm. And so it's, like, these little moments are, like, oh. That's, like, these, these little character moments sprinkled through all the scenes, through the fights, through the confrontations, through, like, you know, things that are being explored. And that that's what I would want to see in a movie like this. And I think if, because we're trying to think like the studio executives, mm -hmm. I really feel like it, most studio executives are going to be like, you know, people aren't going to associate with, you know, the monsters and everything. So you need to have these human characters in there as the avatars for people to go through the movie with. Sure. Like but the I feel audience like, insert or whatever. Yeah. Exactly. And that's the kind of thing that kind of held back previous entries in this franchise, I think. And now we're at a point where like everybody knows who Godzilla is. Everyone knows who King Kong is. And I think that it's really interesting to see that this movie is finally feeling comfortable enough to say, okay, no. The monsters are the main characters here. Yeah, I mean, it, the movie, like, spends a lot of time with them. It ends just with them. Like, we don't get a, you know, some kind of end button with, uh, like, Gia and Eileen or whatnot. But I think it's also successful because it kind of, like, parallels the two. Like, you have Kong, you know, he's back in Middle Earth. And, um... Yeah like has discovered this like new like deeper layer that has so he's on the he's finally got this situation where it's like oh there's other apes like me you know maybe he won't be lonely anymore and he starts to make these discoveries that you know everything isn't so great there and then you have gia who is also kind of feeling isolated because of her like she's the last of her people or whatnot and she's having these weird dream vision things you know and, and she's kind of put in a situation where she could potentially kind of reunite with some people that are you know share her kind of cultural background and whatnot so you're kind of rather than like with the last one having like that stupid horrible awkward conspiracy theory subplot that felt like it was ripped out of like a Roland Emmerich movie or Michael Bay movie circa you know 1995 you know you have these things kind of going together which they kind of feed off each other rather than sort of like eh, just throw this other in because we need people in it sometimes right everything feels like it adds together or at least like everything feels like it, it contributes to this particular atmosphere this particular vibe that they're going for it's not just uh, we need to fill in uh, screen time. Just th throw something in there. It doesn't matter what. Right. Uh, yeah, this just feels overall a lot more honed, a lot more focused. Almost like, you know, like how the atoms of a crystal need to align in a particular way. You know, yeah. like, like crystals. <laughs> there we go. Like let, the crystals. It is. <laughs> is uh, let us not understate that this movie is batshit insane. Um, yeah. 
Not the least of which being due to a man called Only Trapper, who constantly refers to himself in the third person as Trapper. It's like the first scene this guy is in, he just like, he basically gets called in to do dental work for King Kong and he just rips out the tooth. <laughs> And, and the thing is, I think this is, again, this is just kind of like the fun little things where it's like in a world where like, you know, kaiju are just like this normal thing now, you know, there probably is a mm -hmm. guy who's like, I know how to do this for the friendly kaiju. <laughs> <laughs> Dan Stevens was um, having like the time of his life this entire movie because yeah, like, Matthew did not give a single fuck. <laughs> Oh my god. And honestly, like, even the... Because, like, I forgot the conspiracy theory guy from the previous movie. I don't remember what his arc is. But you were telling me that... Yeah, so I'm going to trust that it was. And there's a reason that my brain discarded it. He's, like... He gets the greatest redemption of any, like... Modern movie. Like, he goes from being, like, the worst part. Not him, necessarily. But just, like, the thing he's immersed in is being, like... The worst part of that movie. And then all of a sudden, he's, like he works in it and like there's still some of the little kind of you know like conspiracy podcaster shit but like it's not grating on my nerves and then he gets a fun yeah. like rapport with trapper here's the name i'm gonna try to say as much as possible <laughs> trapper trapper no trapping <laughs> oh no <laughs> but but yeah it's like you know so they and and that's exactly what I love about this because it's taking all the fun elements and amplifying those while minimizing the stuff that was like, like, uh, we have to sit through this to get to the good parts. Mm -hmm. So it's making it more of the good parts, which is great. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So, like, so he goes down and also like, uh, cause also in the opening of the movie where it's like, what is Godzilla up to? And he's just fighting this giant crap. In Rome. <laughs> and it's just like, yeah, this is just normal stuff that's like, going on right. right now. This is the new normal, and it's like, yeah, this is, this is wonderful. <laughs> just snapping yeah, so in the Coliseum. Like, and, and yeah, it's like, you know, and then, like, the proper story of this movie, because like you're saying, um, Scarlett Johansson. It is like the adopted mother, Scarlett of Johansson. <laughs> it, what, are we having what another? Are, <laughs> I'm gonna need what? to get you flashcards with like Hollywood actors on them. I am tired. <laughs> <laughs> I record these things at like ten at night. Be nice to me, Rebecca Hall. Oh, Rebecca. Why did I? Holy, Paul Giamatti should get a role in this movie. Shush! You shush! <laughs> just do what I do. I always just pull up the like wiki page, and that way you can remember whose names is whose, mostly characters. There we go. All right. Uh. <laughs> Anyways, yes, Rebecca Hall. Um, but it's like you know, like you know, she's bringing just the right energy to it. Like everybody just has like, oh yeah. So what I was trying to get at was. You know, so so we have this, this, you know, the general, I guess, the, the theme of the movie, which again isn't super deep, but it's like, you know, oh, you know, you find your family, it's not what you're born with, you know, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Um, which, honestly, like, you know, even though I'm kind of like, you know, like, oh, it's not super, like, unique and like, it still kind of resonated with me by the end. No, it's Just like, it's incredibly basic, like very simple. Like, I mean, this is a very universal thing, but it's a very like simplistic execution of that. But like I was misty eyed a couple of times. I'm like, why is this doing it to me? Right. It's just like, it's, and that's the thing. It's like, this is a movie that I think that man just has still find the right emotional keys to play. Mm hmm. Um, also, I think so it's just very sincere. Yeah, it's and like it's see. Exactly, you know, it's like because everything else, like so many movies, kind of like this, where it's trying to be like a oh, turn your brain off, still kind of feels like lowest common denominator. Here's mm -hmm. the safest bets for us to 
try to win you over, whereas this one genuinely feels like it's having fun as well yeah. in the production of it. No, like, Adam Wingard is, like, just gleefully mashing together his action figures, and there's just no embarrassment about that, which is what you have to do at yeah. this point. Like, Godzilla, like, grabs King Kong, like, suplexes backwards <laughs> with him. <laughs> or, um... Or, like, you know, when, like, Godzilla gets the glove, it's just like, oh, yeah, he gets a power-up now, and you're just like, yeah! <laughs> Go, man! <laughs> And, and we we haven't even talked about so so the villain of this movie, uh, the Scar King. Creepy dude. Yeah, he. And what I like is I like really, again the characterization of the, of mm -hmm. him being done all through like pantomime and gestures and all that like. You know, and obviously, like, my, well, first of all, Kong walks into the camp with baby Kong in tow. And he sees everybody's just being, like, forced to labor. Like, they have to shift these, like, giant stones around. It's not really clear what they're doing. I think it's just, oh, ma maybe it's literally just move rocks from one pile to another because I say so and I like making you do things. <laughs> yeah. It's like a power trip. <laughs> and... This is another one that's so one of the apes drops a stone and an overseer ape is like, oh, you, I'm going to beat you for that. And Kong's like, dude, what is your problem? And then the overseer starts like trying to like yell and scream and like abuse him. And then Kong just punches him <laughs> and knocks him out. <laughs> I mean, that's one way to solve problems, I guess. Oh. But, but again, like, this is... Because, first of all, it's like... Th this is all hitting the the right emotional beats. Because, like, we see this thing is like, oh, this is, like, a really unjust thing that's happening. You see mm -hmm. it kind of escalate. Kong comes in and, you know, tries to put a stop to it. The evil guy is, like, trying to push back. And Kong just lays him out on the floor. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, like, and that's really this, a satisfying... That's a satisfying character beat. You know, you're like, I wish I could do that to a number <laughs> of folks that I've encountered in my life. Right. And you also get like the larger sense of like, okay, this society is kind of built on like the weak praying or the strong praying on the weak, you know, and then also even with these kind of heavies, there's still a greater sense of fear over the Scar King, the leader of them all, you know, like all just kind of through implication right you know it's it's building this stuff very effectively and then when the scar king himself comes out you know sees he tries like to mock kong and again like that kind of reinforces this idea of like you know this is basically rule through bullying rule through mm -hmm. who can shove the rate of weight around the uh the most and then right. um and then, like, you know, Kong is like, I'm going to gonna fight you. I'm going to take you down because you're you're a bad dude. And so Scar King's like, oh, I have this scary bone weapon. And he tries to use it. But Kong actually starts beating him. And so he basically cheats. Yeah. And he's like, I have a crystal that can control a giant ice dragon that I'm hiding behind my lava fall here. Yeah. Um, and again, because like, you know, again, this is like, oh, cool thing, giant dragon, like the spectacle there, but it also shows the characterization where he's like, this guy is like, he's this cruel despot, but he's also kind of pathetic mm -hmm. in a way where it's like the moment he starts losing, he's like, oh, I got to bring out, got to, I <laughs> have to bring out my big gun now to, to win automatically. <laughs> He's like the, like, Joaquin Phoenix character in Gladiator or something, you know? <laughs> yes, that's very much so, you know? And that's the kind of effective storytelling that I was watching this movie. I'm like, wow, I'm not just having fun with, like, all the stuff that's going on, but I'm legitimately impressed 
by the skill that was needed to make this stuff happen. Mm -hmm. Like you establish him as a threat. You kind of feel bad for Shimo, the the um, ice dragon thing. You know, it's it's giving us a lot to kind of it's just like setting everything out so we know that this guy's bad news, and it's going to be really satisfying to like you know deal with him. Exactly. So that way we care. We keep watching. Mm -hmm. and, and then we also learn about his, like, kind of in parallel, we're also learning about what he wants, um, ultimately. Which kind of helps right. to, like, externalize the stakes. Right. So it's like, so, th again, like, the story is just really functioning on every level that it has to. Mm-hmm. Um... You know. And meanwhile, like, you know, the human characters, they've discovered the ancient lost tribe <laughs> of psychics who have taken refuge in the core of the earth as a like, guardians trying to warn Godzilla of this impending threat. Yeah, it's like basically like yeah. the infant island subplots from all the old ones. But inside and the all... earth, because why not? Yeah. And meanwhile, we have, you know, and as this exposition is being delivered, it's being delivered in a way that is still engaging to see. That's still fun to watch. You have like, the, these fancy sets, like the prophecy room. You have the hieroglyphics on the walls, things like that. So it's, it's all presented in a way that is really, that, again, that is really engaging. Mm-hmm. And then, and so like by the end of the movie where, you know, every, uh, the Scar King is like, oh, it's time for me to go and conquer the surface and create a new ice age. Come ride with me, my soldiers. Like you, <laughs> you know, and it's like, oh no, like Kong and Godzilla, they have to, you know, they have to team up, you know, they were mortal enemies. Now they have to work together. Are they mm -hmm. going to be able to do that? Mothra's getting involved now. She's like, boy, stop fighting. There's more important shit to deal with. Now kiss. <laughs> I mean, it is Godzilla x Kong after I mean, all. hmm. <laughs> wonder where they're going next. Um, I mean, you've seen the headlines. <laughs> Don't <laughs> King Kong rides Godzilla in the latest <laughs> movie. <laughs> Godzilla is now canonically by. Um, yes, yeah, like as you know, Final Fight is happening, and again, like they do some crazy stuff that, like you know, the, the gravity's been switched off, so like things are flying everywhere. <laughs> um, and then the Scar King manages to get to the surface, and you're like, oh no, this is terrible. He's starting his attack, but then our heroes show up. And Rio de Janeiro <laughs> has a very bad day. <laughs> I thought Hong Kong got it bad in the last one, but like, there must be someone on the crew that just hates Rio or something. <laughs> like, just fuck you. It was like, it was like he's rapping, like, like Scar King like grabs a chunk of building with his <laughs> bone whip and hurls it over. <laughs> or like. Kong gets a punch in on him and knocks a tooth out and it lands in the streets. Um, and then, uh, you know, they, they shatter the knife that he's using to control the ice dragon. And he's like, oh, uh, Benny Kong, I hate you. I'm going to kill you now. <laughs> and I, again, I was not expecting this. That, um, because, again, I thought I was going to hate Baby Kong. I was, I, and so, for me to actually be like, no, don't hurt Baby Kong. <laughs> it's a major I... <laughs> victory for the movie. Yes. <laughs> because, like, Scar King's just, like, choking this little guy out. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's gone on a whole journey, because when they first met up, like, he was very, like, mistrusting of Kong and, like, even tries to get him killed. Um... Yeah. It's like... And, and I, I just... And again, like, it's really interesting to see because, like, even after, you know, like, Kong is, like, here, you know, show me the way, he still tries a second time to kill Kong. He's and... such a little stinker. 
Yeah, and he's like, oh god, he's gonna kill me now because my plan didn't work. But the dog's like, no, I'm not gonna kill you. Just, <laughs> we're gonna keep going. Just chill out. And you kind of see Mini Kong's like, oh, that's. Huh. Mm hmm. That's not what Scar King does. Mm hmm. And so you kind of see, like, he's slowly getting more and more comfortable. And he's like, maybe this guy, maybe he's a better leader than what we have now. <laughs> More reasonable. Just I did a, get just very a like bit. I did get very like Gollum vibes from him at the start. Yeah, <laughs> just, just like maybe just because the way he was like carried himself, but just like that same kind of like you know uncertain like beaten animal sort of energy. He wants the eels, precious. The <laughs> giant serpents. So when he was like lured Kong into the little pool and it's like being very like definitely not suspicious at all, it was like, oh dear. Oh my god. Ugh, I can like, is... like the expressiveness there. Mm hmm. You can definitely tell the kind of like, you know, he's trying to pull one over on him, but like, you know, obviously we're not being explained that. We just can sense that there's such like richness to the expressiveness of the characters. That is, I will say, like, one kind of quibble I had was, like, things like the that, like, because he tries to trick him into getting killed by this, like, sea serpent thing in this lake or whatever. Um, and that gets, it's a fairly, like, truncated little thing, like, whoop, zoop, zoop, he's done. Or, like, Godzilla spends the whole movie, like, going around and, like, charging up his energy beam or whatever. And so he has to go, like, fight another snake thing and again it's pretty quick quick it's like okay i i does the movie need 20 minutes more of monsters punching each other probably not but does 12 year old me need 20 more minutes of monsters punching each other sure yeah i see what you're saying where it's like you wish you would have been able to see more of those fights rather than just having them occur under the surface of a water basically yeah I mean, yeah, like, they don't have to happen, but... Yeah, it's like, it would have been nice to see. It would have been fun. But also, it's like, you know, because you have the budget to keep in mind. And you know how much it costs to have the Scar King rip the top of a building off with his <laughs> uh, bone whip and hurl it at somebody? Well, I mean, they had to rebuild Rio after that, so <laughs> probably not too... It's a pretty penny. But, but yeah, it's like, and so, you know, by the end, you know, you have, you know, the character, you know, Godzilla finds a play, you know, finds his people and he's not alone anymore. Um, you know, and, you know, the little girl from Skull Island, she's like, oh, you know, it's, it's nice to have found my people, but my real home is with you on the surface and it's so nice. It's so sweet. Mm -hmm. And I was actually like, oh, my my heart, actually. Yeah, someone had decided to bring in an onion and started chopping it up towards the end there, and it was kind of an odd choice for them, but... What will they think of for the concessions next? <laughs> Not any of the little sashimi that Kong was eating throughout. <laughs> was some of the least appetizing. <laughs> it's like, oh, why is everything green? And here's the thing, because like I said, like I've I've seen like this is like kind of like a mixed. Res I think that time is going to be kind to this movie. I think that at the moment, because a lot of people are kind of approaching it as like, for lack of a better word, like a uh, a normal movie, I guess you could say. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. But I think that if you go into this with the right mindset, and you go into this. Knowing kind of what to look for, mm -hmm. there is not just a lot of fun to be had, but also a lot of stuff to genuinely appreciate with filmmaking strengths. Right. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I think when you say it's not a normal movie, I don't, I, this isn't like, you know, poor things or something. Like, I think it's like pretty down the middle actioner or whatnot, but like, right. It's, it's not as like, quote unquote cool kid energy is like I don't know a, not anymore really but the MCU you know but or something along those lines right you know and that's kind of what I'm trying to get at with uh, with my statement there because like most movies like 
that have a certain style to it. Like, you know, again, like, you know, again, to go back to what we were talking about last week, is that like Ghostbusters is trying to be like, no, we're, we're cool, actually. We're still cool. Mm-hmm. We promise we're still cool. Please think we are still cool. <laughs> or like, um, you know, I'm, you know, Marvel's, you know, had this kind of like the sleek energy to it that worked a decade ago, isn't quite working now. Um, whereas this one, you know, or, or even better, like, like, usually if a movie does silly stuff like this, it needs characters, or not needs, but it feels like it needs characters to be like, wow, that's a crazy thing that just yeah. happened. God, you know, it's, that's happening. Yeah, the, the infamous Joss Whedonisms. Um, whereas this movie just, it, it's kind of almost like hard on sleeve. It's like, yeah, we're going to go crazy here. We're going to do things a little silly, but we're just going to have fun with it. And we're not going to be like, oh, we know it's stupid. You know, so please don't think that we're stupid. Please don't make fun of us. It's just like, no, yeah, crack a joke. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. I think, like, the Bernie character is about as close as it gets to that kind of character, but it's handled in a much better slash more tolerable way in this incarnation. Yeah, it's like it's, you know, he's there, but he doesn't, he isn't, like, a constant presence. He doesn't have to commentate on everything. Mm -hmm. He's in it just enough he's in it just enough (laughs) and that's kind of just the main kind of thing i wanted to leave off on there where i really feel like this movie is going to get a bigger audience over time i think it's going to get more appreciated over time and i really hope that this is a direction that they go in for future installments um so far i've seen it be um from the headlines at least it's been successful and that's what studios measure. So please, please make more movies like this. <laughs> um, do you have any other thoughts to close off on? Um, not really. It's, it's a fun time. It's, you know, nothing like, not the most mind-blowing thing I've seen, but I quite enjoyed it. Kind of like an idiot the whole time and kind of wears its heart on its sleeve. Yeah. Yeah, so... Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. Hey, again, there's not really like a thesis statement here. Just, yeah, movie good. Yeah. The the, the, the giant monkey lizard movie, good. Good times. Uh, yeah. So, but yeah, so that'll be, I'll kind of wrap up our discussion for tonight, I think. Um, if you want to see more of us, I'm at Daniel Goldhorn on YouTube. I'm over at Slash Cinema on Tumblr. And we'll see you all next time. Take care. Bye.